Well, folks, in case you missed it, we actually have the play that won the game here in Delaware Valley, a 31-28 final in favor of Brockport in a cardiac game, probably the best of the playoffs, uh, the top two at least. We know that much as Wartburg and Franklin had gone to overtime in the first round. That's about it. But let's take a look at the winning kick. And Brockport becomes the first team since St. John Fisher in 2006 to represent the East Region in the national semifinals, James. What did you think of that game after they led 28-7 to only to give back that lead during the fourth quarter and then be resilient enough to get the field goal to win it? I mean, it says a lot about their their team. I know you mentioned that you kind of heard on the on the sideline when the momentum was shifting that the that the Del Val players were shouting out, you know, they didn't come to play 60. Um, it it kind of looked a little bit like that Alfred game. We kind of traded a few texts back where the where the the Brockport defense may have taken its foot off the pedal a little bit and kind of let the uh, let the Aggies back in the game. But hey, you got to give them credit. They made uh, the plays when they had to. That. A call for the onside kick after the the touchdown that made it 28 to 14 it was a brilliant play, uh, call at the time, uh, perfectly executed where the ball was placed, got them right back in business. And um, you know we knew the Aggies would would get put up a fight. We I think you know we thought Robert would, would win the game. Uh, they did ultimately, maybe not by the margin we thought, uh, but yeah, definitely the best playoff game of the day. Depending on <laughs> some of these other two that are that are looking like they're coming down to the wire also. We're going to get some interviews here. Uh, we have uh, folks uh, chasing down some players and a coach for us. Uh, but let's talk briefly about what happened at Mount Union also today. Uh, surprise, Luke Porman gets the start, even though the two deep on Thursday said D'Angelo Fulford was the top quarterback for Mount Union. Fulford does not play, I don't believe, in this game. At least he didn't start in it. And it's Porman who earlier in the game at one point had seven for seven for four touchdowns and a rushing touchdown when it was something like 35 to, was it 10 or something like that at one point? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Foreman, Foreman was the starting quarterback of Mount Union uh, until he was sidelined with injury last year. Uh, Dom Davis took over and had a pretty decent run until they ran into the Crusaders in the playoffs. Um, kind of a funny thing, Frank, on our Twitter feed, uh, I picked up a Tyler uh, Johnson, the quarterback from Alfred last year, tweeted out, it would have been nice to have played Del Val in the quarterfinals instead of Mount Union. A little D3 humor for everybody there. Um, yeah. He obviously is doing well. He won a, a, a pro um, indoor championship uh, this past season, so congrats to him. But uh, in, in this season's uh, D3 world, yeah, Luke Foreman um, really made the most of his opportunity. He finished the day 12 of 16 for 355 yards and six passing touchdowns. He did rush in another one. Just an, he looked incredible. Um, the offensive line for Mount Union did a great job today, and their defense just, I mean, there's really nothing Frostburg could do. They did score 37 points, but the game really wasn't even as close as that uh, you know, almost 30-something you know, point differential indicates. Yeah, and I'm just trying to uh, turn on the scores from the other games. The, Mount, or the Mary Harden-Baylor-St. Thomas game, which affects the outcome of uh, where this next week's game will be played, uh, it yeah. is right now Mary, Mary Harden Baylor to just, 10. Yeah, they, they just scored in the last few minutes, so I believe the ball is back in the to, in the Tommy's hands. Oshkosh is now starting to pull away from Wartburg. They're up 34 to 20 with about three minutes left in the third quarter. But yeah, uh, Mary Harden Baylor hangs on and wins this game. Brockport will be flying down to Texas next weekend um, for a, a pretty big matchup against the crew.
Yeah, Belton uh, is a great place to play football this time of year because it is warm uh, compared to this. Uh, it has gotten a little cooler since I last talked to you, but I'm still going uh, sans the jacket. It's uh, probably about 40 degrees right now, 40, 42 degrees thereabouts. Okay. And uh, still waiting for our interviews to come on over. Uh, again, it's a little challenging because there is a freeze period imposed by the NCAA uh, at this level. And so uh, we do have to wait for a couple of seconds, but we do have, uh, I think, folks working to get us a couple of interviews before we go off the air here. And if we do not get them for some well, reason, we will we're, uh, definitely post well, while them. We're, uh, while we're yeah, while we're vamping here, Frank, I'll talk a little more <laughs> about the Mount Union game. So it was, I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, you thought maybe Frostburg had a chance, but uh, after like a couple of quick possessions, Mount Union was up 21 to nothing. It really, I mean, they were kind of scoring at ease. Um, they did, uh, Frostburg did make a few plays and they, they got a field goal, but then on the ensuing kickoff, um, a, a player whose last name I believe is Little John took it back from 90 yards to the house. So now all of a sudden it's 28 to three and you're barely into the, the first quarter here. But you know, I have to give credit to um, to, to the Bobcats and the coach uh, Fitzgerald had, uh, you know, had his team um, show up in the second half, I think. I mean, it, I, I, I tweeted out a picture of him um, at halftime. He had, his, he had his squad huddled up around him. He was kind of, you know, shouting and pouring at them to, to try to do, you know, to step it up and make it more of a game. And to open the third quarter, they really did. Their defense uh, forced several Mount Union punts. Um, but, you know, with the, with the run they had in the first half, there was, it was just too large a deficit to come back from. And I think eventually they, they wore down. And, uh, you know, the, the last you know, couple of, you know, I think the last touchdown pass was, was kind of one of those things where even the announcers were like, I'm surprised they're still throwing the ball here. But it was just a great play. Um, uh, the receiver Hill for Mount Union was incredible today. I think he had about 200 yards receiving, three touchdowns. He was basically unstoppable. Um, but, hey, it was a great season by Frostburg. I think they, you know, they did – uh, really well, um, considering. I mean, you know, Mount Union's just looking like they may be a, st a stag bowl um, participant type of team. I can't imagine any situation where Fulford uh, takes the starting role back after the performance by Foreman today. Uh, but you know, I guess we'll we'll have to see what happens next Saturday. The thing that will irritate a lot of fans is that most likely we will not get any indication as to what the quarterback situation at Mountain Union is week to week. And uh, this is kind of a la what Lance Lightbolt did back when uh, with his quarterback situation. I think one of their stag years, in fact, of who was going to start uh, between his two quarterbacks back when, but for probably much better reasons than obviously what the uh, central theme of this last uh, few weeks has been. So we're not sure exactly yep. what the reasoning was. Uh, the two deep again was saying what it said. And who's to say that the two deep won't show four minutes, the top quarterback on Thursday, and they won't start Fulford on Saturday or vice versa. So th this is unfortunately uh, the gamesmanship that comes along with the playoffs, especially when you get into the teams uh, that are used to doing this. Uh, they get a little bit, uh, you know, playing the cards to the vest uh, type mentality. And so don't trust anything yeah. you read pretty much for the next uh, few days because you just don't know and you're not going to hear anything direct from the horse's mouth if I had a guess over at Mount Union. We put that to bed. All right, well, so this, this, horse, this horse's mouth has an update. Uh, touchdown, Mary Harden Baylor. It's 24 to 10 with 10 minutes left in the game. It's looking like the crew is going to go on and win this one. Um, there is still, you know, like I said, 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Uh, and St. Thomas will, you know, be starting off with the with the football after the kickoff. Looks like they're now um, at the 46 uh, yard line, so they're driving. But uh, that touchdown by uh, by uh, Mary Harden Baylor certainly puts uh, puts them in a good a good chance to be hosting Brockport next week. Coach Potter is going to come join me for a second here, James. How are you, sir? We're live, are we? We are live right now. We're live? We're live. Yeah. Yes. Say hi to JB. JB, what's going on, man? He says hi. He can't hear you, but hey, coach, I, I will translate. Don't worry. <laughs> coach, yeah, while we wait for some others, and uh, you're going to help me get a couple others uh, okay. from outside Absolutely. if you can. Uh, 
what was that team feeling? I was on the DV uh, sideline for most of the uh, second half, and watching across, I could see some dejection forming uh, on the offense. It seemed like they just couldn't break through the onside kick that occurred and everything yeah. else. What was going on? What was, what was the spirit of the sideline? How did you guys rally this team back? Did you bring up the Alfred game at all where no, uh, no. some similar stuff no. had occurred? What, how did you get them back into the no, ball game? They got the you momentum got a little bit, and honestly, <laughs> you know, the thing I just kept hearing on our sidelines from our kids that kept saying is, we're going to win the game. It's all I kept hearing our kids say, we're going to win the game, we're okay, we're going to win the game. Our kids, I know Coach Mangoni was on your guys' show, he said, there's no panic. And there really wasn't today. There's no panic with our kids. They stayed positive, um, kept encouraging each other. It's just been the staple of who we are. And how about our defense, huh? Oh, your defense? <laughs> Well, they, they were a little bit cardiac in the fourth quarter, Coach. I'm not going to lie to you. Because, well, we didn't uh, help they, them too much. Like, yeah. you know, Coach mentioned that to our team. You know, Coach Fox has done an outstanding job with our defense, the whole coaching, uh, defensive coaching staff. And um, we probably had them out there a little longer than they needed to be in the second half. Um, but it was fun. That's a fun game, man. That was fun. Coach, go enjoy, but get us uh, Renzi, get us uh, okay. get okay, us Germanario, get us uh, Mangoni. Come absolutely. on, like Paisan. He, get, he, he didn't come over here. <laughs> Not yet. I'll get him. I'll I'll, I'll corral him up. See, right. See that th th these are our inside <laughs> scoops, inside links here, JB. JB, I thought you were, you had the Marpet jersey. Right. And I thought you were ready to take snaps last week. I didn't know if you had a helmet beside uh, you. Yeah. You looked game ready there last week. <laughs> well, thank you, I, I, I tried. Coach Potter, the offensive <laughs> coordinator. <laughs> And uh, I, I didn't break the news to who they may be playing and where they may be flying, but I think they probably assumed yeah. that coming into this whole situation. Uh, anything can happen yeah. live, folks. Anything can happen live. Uh, yeah, and you know what? The coaches it's, come by, etc. It's kind of ironic that it's kind of ironic that Coach Potter said you know the whole thing and you know with the, the Alfred game because at one point I tweeted out, you know, this is the exact you know when they punted the ball and they had they had uh, the Aggies pinned at their own three yard line. I was like, this is kind of the situation where the where the Brockport defense has helped win games um, with a big play, either a pick six or a scoop and score. Uh, and ultimately, even though you know they didn't score a touchdown to win the game, the the defense holding up there um, and forcing the, the the punt and getting them good field position to put them in a situation to kick the winning field goal really really was what it was all about i did think that the defense ultimately you know, did win the game uh for, for the eagles um even though they they kind of you know were on their heels for for most of the fourth quarter they came up big when they had to and that was really uh the difference I'm trying to call up the uh, live stats from this game but uh it was 20 28 to 7 at the start of the fourth quarter and five seconds into the fourth mm -hmm. quarter there was a uh, touchdown uh a Nice uh, pass, I believe it was, if I can get the right touchdown up here. Uh, Deshaun Darden to Marquise Ellis. Uh, Marquise Ellis, I think, responsible for all three touchdown uh, grabs early on in this game when it was 28-21. to 21. Yeah. But the one thing that occurred when it was 28-14 to 14 was an onside kick, as I referred to to Coach Potter a little bit ago. That onside kick was recurred by Delaware Valley. And honestly, they should have easily had it. It started rolling away from them and toward... Brockport's hands, and Brockport actually had a legitimate chance at it as well, and then they couldn't yeah. get it, and there was a scrum on the ground for it, and it was awarded to Delaware Valley correctly, and they go in, and they scored a quick touchdown, if I remember correctly, at that point, uh, down, yeah. I think, for 57 yards, I believe that one was, uh, from Darden, or that was a, that was, no, it was Ellis uh, for 12 yards out after a big play uh, to mm -hmm. set it up. And then later on, Deshaun Darden with a 57-yard run tied the game, and that was with about 940 left. So you can see in about five minutes' time, this thing yeah. went from 28-7 to 28-28, and we went back and forth. Yeah. Both teams had minor opportunities to score, but nothing major, and eventually they set up the field goal opportunity. Renzi's field goal was 33 yards officially, so they got to the 16-yard line. Yeah. It was set up by a huge kick the punter was able to get the ball to stop on a dime just about at the two yard line they marked it at the three Delaware Valley could not three, advance yeah. it far punted it and Joe Germanero got to work uh, with Morrison as well uh, getting some chunks of yardage to get to the 16 yard line to eventually win the game with the 33 yard field goal yeah and if you look at the final stats Frank it was really even across the board I mean the uh First downs, uh, Aggies had 22, the Eagles had 24. Rushing yards uh, went to the Aggies, 172 to 106. Passing yards went to Brockport, 312 to 275. 
um, pretty even as far as penalties. Uh, there were a lot of penalties. There were 21 in the game, uh, 100 yards against uh, against Brockport, 74 against Del Val. Third down efficiency uh, went to Del Val. Actually, they were seven of 16 to um, Brockport, six of 14. So, like we said, the defense had a lot to say in this one, um, and certainly showed it. Uh, Aggies went for it on fourth down one time, um, uh, or actually, so they, they were one for four. So they, they converted one of those fourth down plays. Once again, uh, you know, Brockport's defense doing a great job. Uh, Brockport did not go for it on fourth down at any point. Uh, and so that's kind of where those, those things there. From a tackle perspective, um, Sean Miller, a former guest from our show, led the, uh, led the Aggies with 15 tackles. Nick Wright, who we had on this past week, had seven. Um, for Brockport, uh, Nathaniel Keith the third had 14 tackles, followed by Matt Samansky with 11. Um, Austin Dean, the defensive lineman, had had nine tackles. Uh, from on the offensive side of the ball, uh, Ortiz led the Eagles with 11 catches. Marquise Ellis had seven. Um, as far as total yards go, Jaquan Hubbard uh, led Brockport with 124. Joseph Ortiz with 119. And Marquise Ellis had 184 to lead uh, the Aggies, plus pretty much anybody else in the game, with 184. Okay. I got I gotta be over in the other thing in five minutes. And you were right about uh, Ellis. And we'll just Frank, uh, three touchdowns for him receiving. Uh, Deshaun Darden had one uh, touchdown rush. Uh, Joe Germanario with two touchdowns. Tyree Brown and Ortiz with a, a touchdown reception. Brown ran his ran his in from the Wildcat. And uh, who do we have here? We have uh, Daquan Hubbard, correct? I uh, see they, they give me the right information all the time, JB. Uh, right. Daquan had a quite a day. I've got your line here. Uh, five receptions, 125 yards. Uh, and definitely, uh, Daquan, it was getting chippy out there. I was on the sideline watching this game. I think it was number 23 of uh, Delaware Valley. You and he were definitely chipping back a little bit uh, back and forth. I could tell as this game flow was going on, this was going to be kind of a war in the trenches uh, between these teams. Tell us what was going on out there. How did how did this game develop, and what do you feel at the end of it now? Uh, this game, it started off, we came out strong, and then in the second half, we didn't play to our abilities, and then me and 23, we're just having a good game. It was just good sportsmanship, and that was the best competition I probably faced all season, so I give hats off to him, and then Renzi came out and hit that big kick to win the game for us. What was the uh, team saying on the sideline when it went from 28 to 7 to 28 to 28 with about 940 left? We, were, we weren't panicking because we know what type of team we have. We believe in each other. We believe in our quarterback. We believe in our head coach. So we knew, we knew we were going to be, able, be okay. And our defense went and got the stop for us. Hats off to uh, Delaware Valley. What did yes. you think of this team? Was it one of the best ones you faced all season this overall? Is, this was probably one of the best defenses we faced all year. They, they changed up the coverages. They played a little cover too, a little, little bit of man. So they made it hard for me today. So looking ahead a little bit here, it looks like Mary Hart and Baylor right now is up by two touchdowns on St. Thomas, so nothing's official until the final gun, as we know today. Uh, but, I mean, looking forward to this trip to Belton and representing the East for the first time since 2006 in a national semifinal? Yes, we're, we're really looking forward to uh, playing whatever team we get, and uh, we just want to keep having our season go on for our seniors because they really deserve it. While we're live right now, we'll put it up uh, for recording as well. So give some shout-outs to any family, friends, whoever uh, might be watching. I want to give a shout-out to my mom, my grandma, my siblings, and my offensive line, my quarterback, and my coaches. Amen to that. Thank you. Joe G had a decent day, definitely. Daquan, congratulations, buddy. All right. Got more coming. Uh, we're just waiting for the press conference to end, and uh, we're going to get a few more uh, players to join us, I believe, uh, from offense, defense, et cetera. So uh, stay tuned here. Yep, got another update for you, Frank. So we're down to 4:27 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, Harden Baylor still up 24 to 10. Pretty much looking like a lock that the Crusaders will win that game and will host uh, Brockport. So they're going to be uh, boarding the plane in Rochester and flying down to Texas next weekend. Uh, should be a great matchup. Losing to hear you here a little bit audio-wise, uh, JB. Hope you can hear me. But I believe okay. you're saying that Mayor Harden Baylor is uh, on their way to a victory here. Uh, so. Uh, I, I guess we won't be uh, telling tales out of school if we do say that they will be boarding that plane, as you're suggesting, uh, coming up here. Again, our final here was 31-28. Let's, uh, while we got a moment here for those that didn't watch us at the very beginning of this, play the uh, final field goal uh, footage one more time, and then uh, we will talk a little bit more about this game and what to look ahead to next week, plus interviews. So stay tuned here.
Alex West, you just watched uh, a little bit of the footage there of uh, the team celebrating uh, outside linebacker from uh, Brockport. What did you think of that uh, moment right there? Uh, I mean, it's hard to believe right now. I, I don't know. I just uh, it's so surreal right now. I can't, can't put it in words. Let's talk about the game itself then, and I'll uh, kind of uh, get some words back into your mouth while we do, I'm sure. The uh, defense had some trouble in that fourth quarter after having a great game, obviously, throughout. You guys are bending, not breaking until the fourth quarter. Then the dam broke for a little bit, but you guys, for the last 941 or so, were able to tie things back uh, into, uh, you know, keeping them out of the end zone, ultimately. Tell me what was going on in your mind, especially after that onside kick. Were you feeling like this was turning into that Alfred game a little bit from week 10 where they clawed their way back into the game? You guys had to step up defensively one more time. Give us kind of the feeling in that fourth quarter. Um, I mean, I had no doubt. Um, you know, you always got to believe in your team and your teammates and yourself. Just believe in what the coaches call. Um, yeah, I just feel like the D line really stepped up, um, containing the quarterback. And then us as linebackers, we did all right. Um, and then the DBs locked down. They did all right. Very good. How did uh, this quarterback and receiver and running back uh, group especially, but even the offensive line, uh, how did they match up compared to, let's say, other teams you faced throughout the season? Was this one of the best teams that you faced, do you feel? Oh, yeah, I believe so. I think they're very similar to Alfred. They, uh, they run a lot of formations, so similar plays, uh, different formations. So you just got to adjust to the formations. and yeah. So uh, Mary Harden Baylor is probably where you're going to next week based on the score right now and how late we are in that game. Uh, a, flight, a flight down to Texas. I mean, you were on the road here. Obviously, it was a short trip, though, comparatively. Looking forward to it? Oh, yeah. yeah I've never been to Texas, so I'm looking forward to it. Really? Uh, yeah, never been. Yeah, I can't wait. It's a uh, it's an interesting, beautiful stadium. I'll tell you that. I, and I'm going to try. I'm trying, JB. I'm going to try to get down to Mary Harden Baylor for this one next week. Let's see if I can pull that one off. Uh, check. He's my travel agent too, uh, James. Is so he'll work on getting me the best fare to Belton, Texas, or Austin, or Dallas, which is basically it's right in the middle of the two. But Alex, yeah. you're the student athlete guest. You get to do shout outs. Any friends or family that will oh, watch this live or the recording. So hit it. It's all yours. Uh, all the fans that came out today, that was awesome. Student section, all my buddies at home, my mom, my dad, my grandpa, all my family watching at home. You know, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Every bit of it. Congratulations, bud. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good you luck next week. You want anybody you uh, we'll take Joe G and uh, Renzi if we can get them. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> you can say, we were just making this up as we go along at this point, JB. Come on. Hey, you know, why not? Hey, Gordon Mann, come on in. You're not going too far too fast here. There you go. Gordo. Come on in here. Oh. Microphone's right here, sir. So, <laughs> Gordon, man, called the game, folks. Did a great job, as always, uh, from upstairs in a uh, tight press box, uh, no doubt. A lot of interest in this game, uh, Gordon, obviously. And you and I were kind of messaging back and forth on our little Slack channel that we have. And you thought this one was over. I thought it was over. At 28-7, yeah. to 7, even 28-14. to 14, And then all of a sudden, the onside kick comes yeah. in. What do you think of this Brockport team? You've seen a lot of MAC opposition throughout yeah. the season, but tell me about this Brockport team compared to the MAC opposition. Yeah. Did this team rank way up there in your mind comparatively? Oh, yeah, yeah no, this, this Brockport team would have done just what Delaware Valley did, which was beat every MAC team by 20 plus points. Um, you know, having seen this Brockport team in Wesley, albeit early in the year, this Brockport team, and last week they showed they were, they were better. Uh, what I would say is I think at the top of the East region, you had four programs that were really very close to each other, Brockport and Delaware Valley, obviously. Wesley, which only lost by a little bit here, and in Frostburg, who you know ran into the buzzsaw today. But I think from, from an East Region perspective, this was a year where the East Region could say it wasn't just that we had a good team, but they had four that should be in the top 12, top 15 by the end of the year. How do you think this Brockport team fares against Mary Harden-Baylor, which is the way it's looking like right now? Uh, the question that I have is, can they protect German Ario? Because Delaware Valley got there a lot today. Now, German Ario is, you know, in this area, we enjoy watching Carson Wentz on Sundays because he has this escapability. Good and point. German Ario is like a little version of that. Yep. Um, the thing is, Delaware Valley got there with three and four guys. They had to drop back to, to take away the shorter routes. Um, you know, if Mary Harden Baylor can get there with three or four guys, I think it's going to be hard to hit that short stuff. The defense, though, for Brockport is good. And what I would say about this Brockport team is with the exception of the one drive where they had two personal fouls in the span of 25 seconds, this team doesn't beat itself. They're very efficient. They had one turnover when Germanario got blindsided. 
um, but they're extremely efficient. They don't mistakes. They won't beat themselves in Mary Harden Baylor. I'm not sure they'll have enough athletic talent to beat the Crusaders if that's who it is. JB, any thoughts uh, for uh, Gordon? I, I will translate over here as I know uh, he won't be able to hear you. Or perhaps not. JB can't hear you on this end, and that's uh, that's our uh, our fault on our technology right now. So hold on one second. We'll we'll fix that up. You've got a much better you got a much better guest waiting in the wings anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good thanks. All right, Frank. My pleasure. Congratulations. Gordon, great job. Come on in. How much on this side right here? You know, no problem. And I'm gonna guess. Identify yourself. Jake O'Connell. Yeah, Jake. Uh, I mean, this is a, a game that obviously was not in the books till the very end. But at 28 to seven, tell me something. What was the team thinking at that point in time? Oh, we were rolling. We had a lot of momentum, and uh, we thought we were gonna put them away, but. You got to give it, your hats off to them because they uh, they got some momentum. They got that onside kicks, which helped them a lot, and they kept fighting. And we, we got a lot of respect for that team. So. What were your coaches telling you guys though as this game flowed? We were just they were just telling us to keep doing what we were doing because we were doing what we were doing. You know what I mean? We just had to execute, and um, they had a couple big plays, and uh, yeah, they just told us to keep doing what we're doing, execute our plays, read our bands, and play football. So seemed to work, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless. So I. Give me the play here in this game, though, where you finally thought, before the field goal, obviously the field goal would be the uh, cliche answer at this point, but at what point did you feel we've got this thing, we're, we're going to claw our way back in, it's something that maybe you were participating in, anything that um, you could think of? I think it was a three and out one. I thought the punt, that, that sealed, honestly. The punt sealed it because I knew they were in their own territory and I knew it was going to be tough for them to drop the ball 97 yards, you know, and we trust in our defense, we believe in our defense, so... I'd say the punt and then getting that three and out stop because uh, our offense always scores points, and we knew that if we gave them a shot, they were going to come down and score. Jake, send your best regards to anybody who want your shout-outs. Uh, shout-outs to my mom. I love that woman more than anyone in the world. My family, my dad, my grandpa, my sister, my girlfriend, Janine, all the friends and family. Can't thank you guys enough. Janine, take good care of them after this one. <laughs> guys, so sorry, I'm heading back up to Brockport, so safe travels. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No guys. problem. Thank you. JB, uh, I'm going to have you vamp for a second while I fix your audio. Everybody else can hear you, but I can't, so you go right ahead. Hey, Frank, I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> can't hear you.
audio, guys. Oh, yeah, still can't hear you. Uh, I don't know if you're picking me up here or not. I can hear myself talk, I guess. <laughs> Having a little technical difficulty, but you know, that's D3 football for you. Maybe you should restart, reboot. JVE, you can hear us now, I betcha. Yep. We're going to switch. We're going to switch to something else here, uh, which I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. Mark, now that everybody can hear you, let's do it one more time. Uh, we were talking about Joe Germanario's escapability and everything else, and what a challenge it is, et cetera, to guard against uh, folks not knowing where Joe is at any point in time. So, Mark Sanchez, tell us about Joe his leadership and everything else. Well, you know, he's a, he's a great leader. I tell him all the time, leaders, leaders, Joe, leaders, man. And uh, we're right behind him, no matter what happens. You know, um, he's 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 gonna be he's gonna be that player that has explosive plays. So we just gotta we just gotta run with it and go with it. And if he needs time in the pocket, we'll give him time in the pocket. So uh, we were uh, talking about what he was telling the team as well uh, during uh, that uh, spell. Uh, yeah. What was he telling you guys? Uh, we went a little sna- uh, a little stagnant in the second half, so. Uh, he's just telling us keep it rolling. You know we got to we got to pick it back up. Got to help our defense out. We've been we've been riding our our defense coattails for the whole year, and they gonna they gonna bring us they gonna they gonna bring us as far as they can bring us. And so uh, I, was, I also brought up the uh, question about uh, Delaware uh, Valley sideline. We were hearing the they didn't come play sixty uh, <laughs> quote that uh, I, James had tweeted out there. I saw as well. So what's your response ultimately to that one now? You know, like I said before, utmost respect for that team. Tough team. We had all three phases today. <laughs> That's all I got to say. There you go. Well, you got one more thing to say. Any shout-outs, any friends shout or outs, family? Shout-out to my, my own lawman, Justin Torres, Aiden Barrientos, Kayla Fordillis, uh, Jimmy Grennan, and uh, shout-out shout out all Brockport football fans and Brockport football team. Shout-out to my mom, my dad. They came here. Can't, and all the fans. Can't, 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 can't ask for more. Can't ask for more. Well, you got to ask for a little bit more at Mary Hart and Baylor next week. So good luck there and uh, safe right. travels to Belton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Sanchez, not that Mark Sanchez, as you were saying earlier. JB, can you hear me now? I can. And I, I think when I was when I was rambling on earlier, my audio might have been off or on. Or, but, yeah, what I was trying to report was that the game <laughs> did go to a final. It was 24 to 10. Mary Howe and Baylor won. So, yes, now we all know that the matchup next week will be Brockport at Mary Howe and Baylor. Anyway, so it's it's typical, you know, technical difficulties, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll still pull it together. Please stand by, as they always say. As long as you can hear me, I'm going to continue like yeah. this because I, I can't hear myself finally, which is good news. Yeah. Uh, I think we are just waiting for the press conference to wrap up, and we'll get uh, one of the stars of the day, uh, Joe Germanario, before we do go off the air here. Uh, again, 31-20, our final here with a 33-yard field goal from Brett Renzi winning the game. Uh, the travel situation will obviously be Brockport going and flying to Mary Harden Baylor next week. Now, here's the little catch uh, to all this. We don't know if it's a 12 o'clock start time or not. We're going to assume it is not, actually, because based on the time zone differences between Mount – or well – Actually, no, I shouldn't say that because the better team out of the Oshkosh Mount Union scenario is technically Oshkosh. It'll be one o'clock Eastern. Yeah. So and both games what, should be one o'clock kickoffs. Well, they won't be because ESPN three is what controls that. Give me a second. You got it. I'll take it away from you. So we don't know the answer because ESPN three will ultimately choose which game starts first. And uh, we will uh, let you know uh, when we know that probably tomorrow afternoon uh, which game will go uh, as the early kick and which game will go as the later kick. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor is the defending national champion may have some uh, choice in that. I don't know how ESPN actually does it when it comes down to that, ultimately, JB. So uh, we don't know the answer to the question because of the ESPN broadcasting of it. That's that's true, and it reminds me. I need to go into our Twitter feed and uh, and update <laughs> my last <Yep>. tweets. 
Oh, wait, did you write? That, they're, that they'll be playing at 1 o'clock Eastern, which may or may not happen. Uh, yeah, and that what could actually happen is that if they're going to space the game to 12 and 3.30 or something like that, it would actually be 11 o'clock local time for one of those teams, which is not optimal, obviously. So right now, this probably mm-hmm. in the listings is semifinal number one and semifinal number two, uh, and we don't, they won't have teams attached to it until these are all done and ESPN determines who goes first uh, at the end. So we will yeah. uh, we'll know when you do. And... Again, just uh, seeing off into the distance here, if we're getting anybody like uh, Joe Germanario uh, to come out and join us for one uh, uh, for a third time this season. He, we started the season with him. Uh, we that, yeah. talked to him in the uh, uh, which we call it show there, the uh, uh, pre postseason preview show. That's what I was trying for. Preview, yeah, mm-hmm. yep. And then uh, yeah, obviously no, he's, uh, we're trying to get him now. Yeah, and he'll probably you know get some looks as one of the uh, top All-American quarterbacks. Uh, I mean, there are a few um, guys out there who will you know, definitely be looked at. I know all region teams have been submitted and, and should be uh, released shortly. I know that uh, leading up to uh, the Stag Bowl that you'll be uh, you know talking with uh, with Pat and company and doing a, another show uh, probably on the Wednesday or Thursday, probably the Wednesday before or or. Or is it actually before the Stag Bowl itself where you guys reveal the All-American teams? We do it uh, during the pregame show on that Friday evening. We uh, record it usually on the Thursday uh, before, it, but uh, we, we'll actually release it on that Friday. So Joe, Joe Germanario, uh, speak of the devil right now, uh, coming right uh, my way, uh, will, I, I think, be a safe bet to be on the uh, D3Football.com All-America team somewhere. Come on in this way, my this friend. Way? This way. Let me introduce you to uh, nice. James Baker, Joe Gimineario. How are you, sir? James, what's going on? It's nice to finally meet, meet no, you, obviously, after our two. We're used to seeing you in your dorm room or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, Joe, let's talk about this game. You were escape uh, Meister number one, basically, in that first half. There were plays where I literally said on your sideline, I can't believe he didn't get sacked there. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, eventually the penetration was starting to get through a little bit on you. Tell me about this Delaware Valley defense. How do they rank up there, and how do you feel about your offensive line and how they got you more protection in that last drive in that fourth quarter? Right. First and foremost, hats off to Del Valle. I mean, we were up 28-7, and that's a 12-0, 13-0 football team, as you saw. They, they didn't they didn't hesitate, and they didn't blink, and it was 28 nothing in the blink of an eye. But um, back to your question with me, yes, scrambling. It's a part of my game. A lot of times um, – a play breaks down. I just want to get out of the pocket and try and create with my feet or on the run, keep my eyes downfield and uh, try and find a receiver. Um, a, lot, a couple of times I actually hold the ball a little too much where I'll take the blame to Coach Potter, our, your buddy here, <laughs> for the sacks. So a, a couple of times I hold it a little too much, but it's a part of my game, so they understand. What does Potter say when you have a moment like that? He'll just give me a look. Just a Probably look. can't it's, say it on the air, Frank. The look says it all. <laughs> Who yeah. says we can't say it on the air, probably. Uh, <laughs> right, what he right. says, yeah. Or at least in his head what he says. JB, you have any questions for him? Uh, so I'll uh, translate over here. Well, I mean, one of the things I think Joe should get the most credit for is the fact that he didn't throw an interception against the Del Val team that had 25 on the season. I mean, what what was he seeing back there? I mean, uh, you know, they, they obviously have a lot of talent at linebacker and defensive backs. So but what, what sort of play, you know, Obviously, the offensive line blocked great. What what were some of the reads that he saw based on what the defense was giving him all day? Um, what we wanted to do was uh, identify 22. Uh, if he went back, we knew it was cover two. If he skied down, it was going to be cover three. And um, the reason why I didn't throw a lot any picks today was uh, kudos to our guys making a, a ton of tough catches in traffic. Uh, the Quan Hubbard going up and getting it a couple times where, I mean, the first uh, drive of the second half, you saw – Guy in traffic, he went up and got it. It was a 40 to 45 yard gain, and that kind of propelled our first drive. Um, you saw late late in the third where um, we the drive actually stalled. He had a catch in traffic right over a corner, and uh, we were we were knocking on the door to go up 35 seven, and that's where the kind of the brakes fell off. But I mean, all those guys, 34, 24. I don't know, they're they're all great players. That's a great defense. Um, they had great penetration from their D line, and that's that's a well coached football team. So for me to, you know, we had the turnover on the second drive with the fumble. I take I take the blame for that. I had a guy, I, I held it a little too long, but we just wanted to play mistake free because we knew they wanted to capitalize on uh, um, interceptions and fumbles. They had, I want to say, I don't know, eight or nine um, defensive touchdowns in the last four games. So we didn't want to give them momentum there. 
although we, we kind of did in the second half with the 21 <laughs> unanswered points. But we're happy to come out with a win. Were you surprised it was a 59-point game, though, with the defenses, with, with the way they've been playing over the last uh, couple of weeks, that the defenses didn't keep this score team down a little bit more? Um, a little bit. We Again, our, I was saying it in there when I was getting interviewed. Our goal is to try and score every drive. Me and Coach Mangoni are very competitive, and we want to just we want to try and capitalize on everything they do. We knew it was going to be a dogfight. We tried to put up 40-some points. We knew that, you know, the second half, we were – I wouldn't say we were on our way there, but the, a lot of drives stalled where um, if we correct some things and I, you know, I stay in the pocket a little bit longer, there were some guys open where I escaped a little too early. But it's what, the way the game went. Um, uh, the quarterback for Del Valle, I think his last name is Darwin, he, he was making tremendous throws. That, that receiver, number six, he went a little insane in that second half. And before you know Ellis, it. Yeah. Ellis, yeah. yeah oh, they, they were, go, you know, they just made plays and that's what they're going to do. It was a 12-0 versus 12-0 football game and that's the game you're going to get. So Mary Harden Baylor wins 24 to 10 against uh, St. Thomas. You're going to be flying to Texas uh, next week, and uh, it's obviously going to be the biggest challenge of your college football career. Absolutely. Let's not kid ourselves. Mm-hmm. They are the defending national champions and number one all season at D3Football.com top 25 poll. What do you think? What, give us a quick read here. I mean, is this like everything's gravy moment for uh, Brockport, or is this a we think we have this? legitimate chance to win and we're going to exploit it for all we can and see where it goes what, what is your mindset going just, into just think like what this? you said though we're playing the defending national champs how cool is that an east region team i don't know oh um, six. Oh, six, the last time we went to a final four but yeah no we know mary harden baylor is a great team and we're we're excited for the challenge we really are we're going to go in there and uh coach is going to give us a great game plan uh defensively and offensively and we're just going to try and execute as best we can we're not trying to go in for moral victories no disrespect to them but we're not here to try and oh it was 24 7 brock where you put up a fight with mary harden baylor we're going to go in and try and win which everyone's trying to do there's uh there's four teams left and uh two games remaining to get crowned a national champion so we're going to go in and give them our best shot and we're excited for the challenge you started our season off by doing it uh to the video camera one more time here uh give your <laughs> shout outs shout outs friends, family, anybody that will be watching live yeah. or the recording that will be up there later. I got to give uh, Coach Mangoni, Coach Blauwich, Coach Fox, Coach Potter. I can't miss anybody now. Coach Miller, <laughs> uh, Coach Williams, and Coach Duke. I, all you guys, for all year, my teammates. The defense just not giving an inch. Just every – we kind of left you and belt you know, we left you out hanging a little bit, and our defense just – they rose to the occasion and have done it all year. So shout out to you guys. Um, Shout out to my buddies, Justin Canfield, Will Halp, and all those guys coming to visit me, my brother and my family, my mom and dad, most importantly. He never disappoints, JB. He never disappoints with his shout outs, I tell you. I go a little too far. No. I, know, I go a little too far. <laughs> no, we, we love it. He gives us ratings, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my uncle. I, I got to give my uncle a shout out to my uncle Mo. He he uh, texted me after when you guys do these shout outs, and I always forget people. So, I always uncle forget Mo. people. You know, the, someone's gonna text me. I didn't give you a shout yeah. out. Hey, you guys don't know who you are. Hey, um, no. You know, James, give Mo oh, a shout out. Great. Come on. Hey, Mo. Give Uncle Mo a Go. shout out. Come on. <laughs> he did. There he is. Uncle right. Mo. That's Joe, I love it. congratulations. Good luck next week. Safe travels. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. JB, you know, a lot of people will try to sit here and say that, uh, well, just because there was an East region bracket in the bottom right uh, corner of the quadrant there, that, well, you know, this whole 2006 uh, finally thing being broken finally doesn't really matter. But you know what? The team that won this game, I think, would have made it through their uh, bracket overall, their quadrant. And I think – there's a certain level of what we learn when we see these two teams go to almost an overtime scenario. It was 31-28 because of a last-second yeah. kick. So you got to look at this game and basically say to yourself, uh, essentially, you know, the history books are rewritten legitimately. No asterisks here. Other, uh, you know, mm-hmm. regions have had a seven out of eight teams or six out of eight teams, and we don't take it away from them. So. Anybody out yeah. there saying, well, yeah, look, they had to, somebody had to make it to the semifinals, that's not the point. These were two very good teams, and that's what the committee appreciated and why they gave them that quadrant at the end of the day. Frostburg as well, but they wanted to spread them out a little bit, obviously. So think of it that way. Yeah. Coach Mangoni to my right over here. We're going to get him on in here for a moment. Come on over here, Coach. Right. Good, good thanks. Uh, it hasn't been that long since we saw you last. Well, no, yeah, not that long ago. Another uh, week for the beard, as James just said. So <laughs> just trimmed it up. Just trimmed up yesterday. So uh, uh, a little shorter. I, I was thinking maybe you got to trim during the fourth quarter or something. Uh, that was what was going on. So let's let's start with the beginning of the game. Yeah. 
what were you telling your team when you were starting to go up, you know, 14-7, 21-7, 28-7 mm -hmm. uh, in the third quarter? Were you feeling like they were getting complacent, maybe an Alfred-type situation? What were you thinking? Not complacent at all, um, you know, because we've been in that situation a decent amount, luckily, this year. So we've, we've had chances that you know, we've been up 38 nothing at halftime in games, um, and guys are eager to get out of the half to keep going. So it really, I mean, the whole tide it came down to first and 10 from the 10-yard line, up 28-7 and we get a dumb personal foul, right? So now you're back 15, first and 10 still, yep. but then we ball start. Yep. So, like, where did our focus go, right? It wasn't – yards of penalties in two plays, in basically. In two plays, and now – and then we don't score, and then they get the momentum. They score, onside, score. Because let, let's be honest, this is a good football team, right? Absolutely. They're not getting to lay over and die on us. And, uh, and we didn't expect that, but we have to stay more poised. We, we lost our composure a few times, and – we talked about it from Monday on, and I'm very upset with how we compose ourselves. So we have to find a way to uh, to refocus ourselves and not get caught up in, in talking. There was some talking going across the field, though. I'm not going to uh, lie to you. that I, I, I heard it. I saw it. Uh, there was an injury, and the coaches were yapping across the field. This was getting chippy at some points. Are you surprised by that at all? And what did you do on your sideline to resolve that? Well, unfortunately, the young man got injured. And our guys on our sideline were on the knee. I was talking to our offense. And then I saw a coach, like, pointing to our sideline. And I said, I, I pointed back, like, what's he asking us? Yeah. Maybe in a little more volatile tone. But, like, I don't, I don't understand what we had done. Um, and I don't know what his, his take on it was. I don't have a chance to talk to him. I only shook a few coaches' hands. I know there's 18. I think I shook four people. Because, um, you know, it was, just, it was crazy. Nothing, they didn't avoid us. It was just nuts at the end of the game. So I don't know what the problem was, and I hope they don't didn't think there was any disrespect to their injured guy. Nobody wants anybody injured. Uh, you had an injured guy in that play, too. The whole thing. And that, we were, yeah, and we were more getting our guy that's going in ready to go. Yep. So I don't know what happened there. Um, unfortunate that it did happen, but, uh, you know, we just kind of kept playing. So Larry Harden Baylor's up next. That's We know this now. Uh, it's 24-10 final against St. Thomas, and uh, JB uh, is the one feeding me the information over there. Right? But uh, – this is a team that, as I just said to Joe, number one all season long, defending national champion, obviously just took care of a team that has been to the Stag Bowl a couple of times in St. Thomas. Give me your take here on what's up ahead here for your team and how you even begin to prepare for this buzzsaw you may be facing. Yeah, obviously a major challenge, right? Undefeated last year, won it. Undefeated again this year. Um, and for them to beat St. Thomas obviously speaks volumes of how good they actually are. Uh, you know what? It, it, it's it's like nothing different. Sunday, get the film, start breaking it down, see what they do, what they do well. Probably not much that they do bad, unfortunately for us, right? Um, and just kind of get our blame, game plan together, offensively, defensively, obviously special teams, and and get ourselves rewired to to a, for a different program. Um, it's going to be a, a Thursday travel, um, so we'll get down there in plenty of time to kind of get ourselves settled in and, and get ready to play. Have they gone through all the travel uh, aspects with you? Uh, I know Terry Small was here, who is uh, this site rep, and yeah. he's very good, I know. He's and, so, uh, we'll, what's kind of the game plan from what they can Yeah, so out? we got to figure out if we want to fly out early on Thursday or afternoon. Depends on when we want to practice. If we want to practice in Brockport and then go or leave and then practice down there somewhere. So that's what we got to figure out um, probably tomorrow, more importantly, and then know by Monday what's actually occurring. Practice somewhere warm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be probably the, the goal, right? So that would be probably what we do. Coach, uh, we're going to wrap things up after you're done. So you're going to give the last shout out to the day. Uh, I know your family's still waiting for you to come home a little bit more, but it, we got one more week at least, family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to my kids. My, my oldest son had his uh, first tackle regional tournament in Canton, Ohio. They won yesterday, and they're actually playing right now. So I'm uh, kind of eager to see how they're doing. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, Renzi. How about Brett Renzi, right? Yeah. Two two freezes on on timeouts and bang that field goal, and having a senior is just monstrous in that situation. Um, Goldberg for for the snap and Jaeger for the hold and and Jaeger for the punt to pin him down there initially, right? And then we stopped him defensively and got the ball in position to move the ball. It was right in front of me. I saw that ball. I, 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 I saw it hanging and coming down. I'm saying to myself, that ball is going to bounce back. It's yeah. not going to bounce forward. Yeah. And sure enough, it just almost went straight up. Yeah. It was amazing. It's, and he's done that all year. He's phenomenal. Right? He's only a junior, so. So, no, I, those guys and obviously our whole staff, all of our players, administration, I mean, I could go on for on for, for days. But uh, very exciting time here in Brockport and, uh, you know, get ready and refocus for tomorrow. Go plan the travel. Go see how things are going up in Canton. Absolutely. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Coach. You. Take care. JB, let's uh, take this one yeah. home, as they say.
Yeah. Any final thoughts? Uh, well, there is a there is a final. Uh, Oshkosh wins <laughs> forty one to twenty seven. So we have our feet, the final well four. Uh, it'll be it'll be uh, Mount Union tr- most likely traveling to Wisconsin to play the Titans, and we'll also mm-hmm. have uh, Brockport heading down to Texas to play Mary Hardin Baylor. And it's it's exciting to know that there's an East Region team in the final four. They're effectively, I mean, maybe John Rollins and company should have been there with the Lambert Cup because you know we 13 and 0. They're going to be the best team in the region, and so they'll they'll get that uh, trophy probably in February when they do the uh, you know award ceremonies uh, down there at uh, either MetLife or uh, one of the one of the stadiums there in New York. Um, but yeah, no, great uh, great weekend of football, exciting games. I mean, yeah, the Mount Union Frostburg one didn't turn out the way we thought it would, uh, but hey, uh, maybe you know if you're Mount Union if and you kind of go through this week of all the distractions. Uh, they they moved past it now. Uh, Luke Porman looks very poised. Um, it'll be interesting to see who starts against the Titans uh, next weekend. And you know, at the end of the day, if this is the one the one game that Luke gets to play in, he certainly uh, made the most of it. So uh, good for Mount Union. And um, you know, hey, end of the day though, we're more of an East Region show. So go Brockport. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know what we're going to do for the rest of the week as uh, the weekend progresses here. But uh, this is kind of our host chat segment because we have broken down everything pretty much in the games. And uh, we will see uh, where we go from here. Uh, this is about as deep as we've gone uh, show-wise for the simple reason uh, nobody in the Liberty League ever made the national semifinal since we started. Uh, RPI was back in 03, if I remember correctly. So uh, this is uncharted territory for us as well. So, JB... Thank you uh, for being there today uh, to sort of, uh, at the very least, vamp uh, while we were trying to get things together here. But I think this one worked out pretty well compared to earlier on, uh, much more consistent uh, at our uh, stream quality here. Uh, A couple uh, little fumbles here and there. A couple fumbles on the field today, though, too. But ultimately, we had a great game, and we had a great show as well. So, Mm -hmm. folks, thanks for joining us, and we will talk to you this week. Check our Twitter feed for a lot more as things develop. All right.